So let's calibrate our display in another calibration video. I'm just kidding. So rather than calibrating our display for this video, what I'm going to do is talk about a display QA or validation report and go over how you can read and make sense about those report and what is really telling you about the quality of your ICC profile or your calibration. Because I have done so many videos on calibration already and most of the time when it comes to the display QA, I just kind of really briefly gone over it but haven't really talked about it at length or in detail. And this video we're going to do just that. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. So what I'm going to do first is validate the profile on my laptop and the profile for this one is generating using i1 profiler. I've also gone in and set the brightness properly on the laptop already as well. If you want to find out how to do that, I have made multiple calibration videos on how to calibrate any device both Mac and PC with a built-in display. Make sure you check the link out in the description below. So what I'm gonna do here is use i1 Profiler Advanced Mode and on display, I am going to click on Quality. For this, you may get an air dialog if you have multiple display hooked up to it, especially if one of them is a hardware calibrated display, similar to the BenQ that I have right now. But what I have is the program on the color LCD, which is the one that I want to do the profile validation on. And the next thing that I have chosen right below or automatically by default is the x right Color Checker Classic, which generally represents the colors that we would see in the world. This is really a good generic representation of all the colors that are out there. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the Color Checker patches, you can also go in and use the standard mode. And there are other patches that you can measure. Most of these patches are going to be generally for CMYK printing, that is the four color press print, which is not necessarily something that is accurate to what we need for photography editing in general. Another thing too that you can do instead is to drop in an image in here and have i1 profiler generate 20 different color patches for you. So for instance, let's take a look and let's say if I want to measure the colors of this photograph, what it's going to do right now is the moment I drop it in is going to load those 20 patches up and I can run a measurement of this. So for generic display QA references, what I would recommend is to stick with the standard and to stick with the x right Color Checker Classic again because this represents majority of colors that you, we would see in the real world and would give us a really good overall representation of the colors that are being able to show it on the display. So from here, what I'm going to do at the bottom is click on measure measurement and then click on start measurement. I'm going to put the colorimeter or whatever device that you have on the display. We'll have it hanging from there and then click on OK. And start measuring. So what's happening here is that the program is going to flash a color that it knows the value for, but rather than for instance, like in when you calibrate the display initially where it just flashes the color based on no color input or no color manipulation, what it's doing is that it's flashing the colors based on the ICC profile value and then afterward it's going to calculate the difference between the reference and what the ICC profile color is showing. This is going to generate a value what we call Delta E. If you want to find out more about Delta E, I'll put a link up here. I just made a video about that. Make sure you check that out first and then we'll come back and talk about the validation report. So the validation have finished and what I'm going to do next is put this device off, take this device off the screen and go to QA report. So in this QA report, it's going to give us a few things for, for us to consider. Number one, the Delta E type. I generally recommend that you keep this at Delta E 2000 because this is going to be the most accurate Delta E that you can get. You can also go back here and choose Delta E 1976. However, the 2000 is going to take into account more variables into the computation of the Delta E value. The other thing too is that the average and maximum. Normally what I would do here is set the average Delta E to 2 and the maximum Delta E to 5. And if you just want the TLDR version and you don't want to really read through this report, as long as 
your display can pass the validation with an average of two and a max of five, you're fine. You can really just close this out and go on with working with your images. However, if you want to go in a little bit further, you can look at the average delta E for all the patches right now. My average for all the patches is 0 0.6 and the max is 2.4. On the side where you see the color patches is also highlighting the color that has the maximum delta E in red. So for instance, this gray black right here is showing the delta E in red and this one has a delta E of 2.406. Where the second one right there, the one highlighted in yellow, this is the one with the second highest delta E, so it's 1.23. And anytime you really have a delta E value below two, I wouldn't even really worry about it or within the two range. But generally, when you hover over this, it's going to give you these delta E values. Another thing what I do too is I generally like to save this report out. And I'll call this, um, I'll just call this report for now. And this report is really great because when we look at the delta E in here, we have to hover over if different values to try to see what the delta E are. The nice thing about the report is that it will give you one place where you can have all the information in a heads up view like what you see here. So the test itself will give you the tolerance that you have set for delta E max average and everything. It will show you the same measurement value, but below that it will tell you the colors that is being measured, what coordinates of RGB and lab color those are, what is actually being measured, but where you really should consider and pay attention to this color chart is in the last column called delta E. This is going to, again, give you a very similar heads up information similar to what you see here where, for instance, you know, this color is being highlighted as the one with the most delta E. So should you be concerned about this? Yes and no. I think you should be aware that certain colors may have a higher delta E, but ultimately in the end, if you're just doing photo editing in general, all the colors generally homogenizes and you're really not going to see a big difference even with a delta E of 2.4 uh, in this situation with this gray color patch. All right, so now that we have gone over how to read this delta E a little bit, let's try something different. So rather than just really focusing on using the Color Checker Classic, let's say I just come back from a photo session and let's say right now I have a portrait photo shoot. So what I'm going to do is go in here, choose image, and I'm going to use that portrait as a main picture that I'm going to have the program generate the 20 color patches for and measure to see if I edit this entire portrait session in Lightroom or wherever that whatever program that I use, how will the color look, you know, how would the overall Delta E be overall for this portrait session? So let's try that out. So what the program is going to do right now is very similar to what it was doing with the Color Checker Classic, but rather than using those patches, is using the 20 patches that was generated based on the image that you put in. This is a really great way to just get a bearing on how accurate the color is going to be with the images from a similar session with a similar background, similar skin tone, so on and so forth. So it's a great way to just get an idea of the accuracy of that color for those sessions. And now that it's finished, let's go to QA report. So based on the picture that I was using right now, and if I change the, again, the average and the threshold, average to two and the max to five, it still passes validation. The average in all the patches is 0 0.6 with the lowest of a 90% 0 0.5, so that's even good. The highest of 10% average is 1.3. We can look through all these different numbers, but essentially the max for one of the patches the one in red here, which is this specific darker tone color right now, is measuring a delta E at 1.9. Again, the value is really within range of where you won't really see the difference. And this really dark tone, this black color right now, is showing a delta E of 0 0.93. This is below one. Again, even if you have them side by side, you barely would be able to tell any difference between this value and what the reference value is. So this is pretty much how you would be able to do a validation report using a picture with i1 profiler and doing a validation report using the color checker classic to get the overall outlook of the program so what i've just showed you is how to validate your display profile using i1 profiler 
Remember that if you have a third party ICC, that means a ICC profile that was generated with another program, I1 profiler will not run a validation on it. So it will only validate profile that was generated with I1 profiler. And now what I'm going to do is run a validation on a hardware calibrated display. For this video, I'll be using BenQ SW270C along with Palette Master Element as a demo. However, if you have a hardware calibrated display from any other manufacturer, you want to use the manufacturer's software to do the validation. I am going to choose Advanced Mode, click on Start, and rather than doing the profiling, I will just choose Validation and click on Next. From here, we are going to validate our calibration. Remember that every time you come in and do a validation, whether it is a hardware calibrated display or a software calibrated display, those values, the delta E that you're getting in the end, can vary and change based on the time that you run it. Because what happened is these are electrical devices. There's always current shift. There's always some environment. There's always some pixel being warmed up or in the, in the state of warming up and so forth. So things can change. But in general, the Delta E should fall within a similar range to what you're getting before. But it may not land on the exact value. And these things can change again because we're actually doing a measurement. And all these things are really close approximation of what they are anyway. So I was able to validate the BenQ display the SW270C and this passive validation with an average delta E of 0 0.9 and a maximum delta E of 1.56. So what does this really mean? Is this very similar to the i1 profiler? So we look at the validation report in Palette Master Element, the TLDR or too long didn't read version is that you can just stop at the average and the maximum and as long as those two values are under two you can just forget about the rest and just go about your day. But if you want to read it further you will see that in palette master element is very different than i1 profiler. Where i1 profiler will do the color checker classic and everything palette master element does true white 255 255 255 down to 42 42 42 and it breaks that down into 11 different tones. And then afterwards, just measures the red, green, and blue. In Palette Master Element right now, there is really no way for you to load in a custom photo or to load in a different chart to do a profile validation. But again, this really gives you a good overall idea of how this profile is and how the calibration is. It may not be accurate necessarily to the photos that you're going to bring in, but this is going to give you a good indicator of if you have a good calibration or not. And based on this, you're able to. So here's the situation. For these display, again, if you're able to get a maximum delta E and an average below two, I would say just don't even bother calibrating again. Enjoy your display and go in and edit, make great photos, create really great work with that because you can just forget about the color inaccuracy at this point. If the delta E maximum is between like two, two point something, 2.4, something like that, again, if you watch my delta E video, you will know that at 2.4, it's really hard to tell the difference unless the color is right next to each other. Anyway, I hope that you find this video on how to read and interpret a color validation report helpful. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time a little cool great contents like this, and until next time, I just write.